We've missed a couple weeks for the EQ8 lessons. I started the reaching so long and there's just been a couple things that have kept me really busy. So I wanted to get back into it. And this week we're going to talk about a couple different ways to add those curved sections to our patterns. Um, and I'll show you both ways. One of the ways works better for this project and it's pretty clear, um, but you could use either one of these in any project or sometimes both of them. It just really depends on the pattern you're making and the feel and the look that you're going for. So I'm going to pull up the block we were working on last time, which is our trusty water bottle. And I realized almost as soon as we finished last time that this section right here, because we changed the way it worked out, the, the way it was broken down, um, I actually realized that these two lines are no longer necessary. Previously, this whole section was arranged differently and we needed these two lines because this was a section. Well, now that we have this line straight across, we don't need anything else in this line to be broken up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those. And I know it works as is, I'm just gonna double check because it's doing the sections for us, but we'll double check once we delete these lines that it's still working. So I'm going to use my pick tool and I will zoom in here just to make sure I get the right things. I will pick and choose and delete and choose and delete. Okay, so now it looks the same. We just got rid of the two extra lines we don't even need. And then we'll make sure that it's still doing the pattern work for us, it's thinking. Oh, so we did break it. <laughs> but we know how to overcome that because that's what we did last time. Because we're going to be adding additional lines, I'm not even gonna worry about um, going in and fixing it right now. We'll do that at the end if we need to. But So last time we did have the tracing image. Uh, I'm not worried about it this time. Um, you could continue with the tracing image if you want to in the background, but um, these are the curves we're working with. They're kind of high on the bottle. We do know, based on previous lessons, that we have to divide this main bottle up somehow because there's two concave curves here. We have to divide it somehow. So there's two main ways we can do it. So the first is actually just to chop this thing in half pretty much right where the curves would be right at the inner part of those curves. I'm gonna make sure I have the correct snapping options on and I'll just draw a line here and divide it up. So that's essentially going to be the very narrowest part of my bottle right there. And you can put this anywhere. I might move it up a little bit. And when I do move it, I'll make sure it snaps to the lines. There we go. Mm. Let's do it. No, actually, maybe I did like it where it was. Let's go there. So that's gonna be the narrowest part of our bottle. We've divided those concave angles at this point. So now we can make our curve off of this. So let me see what do we wanna do for snapping options. I think I'm going to keep with, our bottle is not centered on this block. That's okay. If we really wanted to, I can move all these. You know what? Let me show you how to do that. So it's not centered on this block, but if we want to move all of these lines over, we'll just pick and select all of them. And then we will use this little cross hatch here and move it over and make sure I've got it selected on the right snapping options. And then these don't come with it, so I will move them over as well. Now, probably it's not gonna like that we did this much work at the same time. So we will probably have to redo these lines, which we know how to turn them into uh, guidelines and then redo them. But let me just look out of curiosity. Our coloring is messed up. But if we were to say, turn it into a foundation paper, paper piece pattern, yeah, same, we're missing a line up here. That's okay. But now our bottle is centered at least. So I am going to go ahead and convert to guides. And then I'll just redraw these real quick. Stand by.
Okay, so we're back to where we started. So now we can work on our curves. And essentially we'll just work off this center line here. So I can, what I might do is turn this back on just so that it gives us a nice even um, connection. So uh, if I have the snap to grid points turned on, I know that it'll kind of snap in the same place on each side. If I have that turned off and I just rely on um, nodes or lines, it might not snap in the same place. The exception here would be I can edit this line. So I click edit and this line. And then I have some really fun um, settings over here that I can use. I can actually add nodes to this line at even direct at even intersections intervals even intervals. So I can choose how many intervals I want how many nodes I want on this line. And I'm gonna look at my water bottle and see, you know, how far in does this line actually go? Not very, so I don't wanna come all the way into this grid point here. So I definitely need more than three nodes. Um, let's try five. So I can apply five partitions. I think even five is, too big let's go back and do let's see what seven looks like see i think that's a little better it might even be too much but i think it's a really good place to start so now i can use snap to node and snap to line and i will zoom in a little bit here what i can also do is i feel like even this feels a bit too narrow. Let's just... Mm, that's too narrow, but what we can do is edit just this little section in half. Let's see what that looks like. I think that's pretty good. So I'm gonna do it to the same one over here. And there. Now, if I really wanted to be particular, I could turn on snap to grids and it would snap at half the grid there, um, but I'm not worried about that. Now we need to come and do the bottom half. I don't even think we need to add any more curves here. I think this is a pretty gentle angle and it kind of looks like it's curved enough. Uh, we might have to do a couple curved lines down here. Although I don't know, maybe we don't. Let's see what it looks like. Actually, it looks pretty good. I do feel like... Maybe we could... No, I think it's good. If we did want to add a little bit more gentleness to these curves, what we could do is divide this one in, let's say, thirds. We'll come in a little bit more. Whoops. Come in a little bit more and pull a line from here. And then actually let's keep doing our little node trick. So I'm gonna divide this one in half. And then what I'll do is I'll draw a line from here to here. And that just makes that curve a little more gentle. We can look at it and see if we like it. And then for this, whoops, for this bottom line, we'll come here and let's try there. So this was in thirds and we'll add a line here and we'll divide this one in half and bring the line up from there. Let's see what that looks like if it's if it's a nicer curve. It is a nicer curve. I think it's not narrow enough at that point. 
But at least you can see how we can adjust the angle of our curves so that if we don't want you know it to be extreme we can change that so that's the first way to do the concave angle the other way i'm going to go back to our original water bottle um actually where were we after we changed all of the lines again let's see what this one does not that one it's that one there we go so I'm going to get rid of this middle line because the other way to add these curves is really just Continuing, so instead of bringing this line to that midpoint and stopping, I'm going to bring it all the way down to the bottom. And again, if we want to make sure it's nice and even, we could divide that bottom line up and add some nodes there so we know exactly where we're bringing this line to. I'm not so worried about it today, right now, but um, for just demonstration purposes, but for you, you could divide this up. So I'm going to bring it there. And then I will do the same thing off the other side and bring it down to right about there. And then we need the, the curve, that's the curve going in and then we need to come back out of that curve. And so we will just do the same thing and now connect to this line here. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it. But you can be more precise and use your nodes. I really like that curve, but what happens here is you kind of have to decide, do I want my pattern to have these two long lines in the center? This works really well for um, immediately, I think of like a person, a human, a torso. These lines would work great for a torso. Do they work great for a water bottle? I might prefer the other way. You also have to think about the fabric you'll be using. Um, you know, on the first version, we had our fabric cut right in the middle. And depending on your fabric, that might be okay. In this one, we have this long piece of fabric, but then we have the two side sections. So it really depends on how you're going to use your fabric and the fabric print and how it's going to look, how obvious it'll be. You might not want a line straight through the middle of your pattern. And so this way of dividing your concave curves <laughs> will work out better. Uh, sometimes too, um, one might end up with fewer pieces than the, than the other. I think this one um, has fewer pieces, so it might just plain be easier. So it's really up to you and the purpose um, that, you'll, that you'll give your pattern and the look you want it to have, because these lines will show in the final block. You can quilt over it, uh, and kind of blend them in but if it's especially something that you won't be quilting over you do need to keep that in mind that there will be sewing lines there will be seam lines right in the middle of your block and it just depends which seam line you want in your block somehow you have to divide that concave angle up but it depends on how you want it to look as to which method you use so those are just the two ways um, that you can um, I will actually go ahead and add some shape to our mouthpiece here because I feel like that's kind of a part oops, of the water bottle um, and we could add a lot more detail to this if we wanted to um, we could make all of these a little more gentle of curves so like here and again, it just really depends on the purpose of your pattern and how much detail you want. It also depends on the size of your pattern. This block right now is 10 by 17. It's a good size pattern, but these little pieces get pretty small pretty quickly. So it just really depends on uh, how much work you want to do and how much detail you want to add. Um, you could always draw them in, but then not actually sew them, kind of give yourself they're optional and so you could just leave them in for now give yourself the option later to use them or not but I really like see and I might actually adjust this mouthpiece um, but I think it's okay as is that's a pretty cute water bottle
So that is how to deal with our concave angles. Um, draw a water bottle, draw something with curves, draw a person. A person is a great example of, you know, that waistline or anything that would give you those concave angles to practice with. And just remember, you have to divide them up somehow. You have to make them either two separate sections or you have to draw your lines all the way through that angle. I will be on a 10 day Caribbean quilting cruise that I've designed a pattern specifically for. Actually, that's it right there. So this quilt I have designed for the Caribbean cruise and um, it's a foundation paper piece pattern that you can only get when you're on the cruise and the cruise cost includes the cost of your quilt top kit and it'll be in boutiques um, so I will put the information for the quilt cruise in the description as well so I will see you soon bye